Good morning. In the name of God, I bid you welcome to this place and to this time of prayer. As we gather together for worldwide communion, we bid the congregation of, Wel- of Woodlawn welcome this morning who join us because there's no power at Wood- well, there is power, but not electricity at Woodlawn. <laughs> You'll make the distinction. As always, we bid people welcome to this place. The First Nations people welcomed us, and we acknowledge that we meet on the land and the territory of the First Nation, the Mi'kmaq. So I bid you welcome to Mi'kma'ki, to the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. As they have bid us welcome in their language so often here at Port Wallace, we bid other people welcome in the languages of this congregation. So je vous souhaite le bienvenu de toutes les gens qui nous joignent en français ce matin, de, du Québec et de l'Acadie peut-être, ou de, de Nouvelle-Écosse. Bienvenue ici dans cette petite église à bord de, à bord de la rue Waverley à Dartmouth et Nouvelle-Écosse. Welcome in this Kirche. Welcome to this place, all people who join us in a variety of different languages this day. Let us begin by summoning the light of Christ to be in our midst. God of light, your radiance shines among us in many forms. May these candles remind us of your guiding presence, always present in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as we gather, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us join together in the prayer of approach. Let us pray. God of mystery and majesty, Dieu de sagesse et de sainteté. You have formed us in your image and have called us your own. Du allein bist der Heilige, toi seul et sainte, you alone are holy. You have called us to your side and prepared a place for us. Hachin and Ishri de Huve, in the great company of the saints. Assist us to hear your voice and accomplish your will, and live as your people in the unity of the Holy Spirit. With Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn is numbered 232, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, in Voices United.
broken and contrite heart, God will not despise, and we come before God this morning with our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Most merciful Redeemer, plein de misericorde, wir beckenen, das wir in Sünde gefangen sind, and we cannot free ourselves from sins that ensnare us. Yet you seek to redeem us, restore us, and replenish our souls with forgiveness and pardon. Therefore, we confess what is broken in our personal lives, what is broken in our world and society, and what is broken in our relationship with you, our God. Send your Holy Spirit, your breath of new life, to guide us to holiness and health, and fill us with your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, believe in the good news. Jesus Christ has come among us, sent from God, to reconcile and make new, to be merciful and give life anew. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Our first lesson today is from Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 19 through 26. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. There are new every morning, great as your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 137, and we have a refrain that we will be singing, and Adam is going to teach us that refrain now. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept when we remembered Zion. We gave up, we hanged our harps upon the willows. Our tormentors and captors taunted and teased us, sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? My heart is
If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my hand forget its tongue skill. If I forget you, O Zion, let my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, O Zion, if I do not consider Jerusalem to be my highest joy, then let me die in this barren land. Remember, O Lord, what the Edomites did on the day that Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughters of Babylon, you are doomed to destruction. Blessed is the one who repays you according to what they have done to us. Blessed is the one who seizes your offsprings and dashes them against the rocks. Please stand if you are able. The gospel lesson today is from Luke chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. He replied, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after sheep. He will say to the servant when he comes in from the field, come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. May the Lord grant his blessing on the reading of his word. Everybody. From here is good? Sure. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm new in town, so I'm trying to figure it out like some of us. But I do, on behalf of Woodlawn United Church, want to extend uh, just a deep uh, uh, appreciation and gratitude for your hospitality this morning and opening your house of worship to us uh, that we might worship together. And today, you see, it's World Communion Sunday. And I want to just speak a little bit about distance, because I think maybe we're overcoming some distance being together like this today. And, you know, through the pandemic, we've heard about keeping our distance. And maybe that's something that's on our mind a little too much. Uh, maybe there's somebody you like to keep your distance from. I don't know. Um, you don't have to tell me if it's me, but, you know. Uh, but there are times when people will try to keep their distance from the minister. There are other times when they want to be close. And I think that goes for so many uh, things in life to remember there's always going to be distance that separates us. 
Uh, I think of this past week, you know, the, the devastation that has occurred in the Atlantic provinces here in Nova Scotia. Uh, you know, what some people are going through in certain areas compared to maybe what we're going through, that can create a distance. You know, our experiences in life, uh, whether or not we are a particular gender, whatever, how we speak our language, so forth, there is so much that can create a distance from us and others. And so today, appropriately, on uh, this Sunday, I think, here we are celebrating the sacrament, the gift of the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and it's World Communion Sunday. And what we do today is something that Christians share in around the globe. And that is something when you think about it, because it's meant to overcome distance that we share in the same meal. And not only do we share it with Christians all around the globe on this day, we share it with people of faith who have gone on before us for centuries and for those still to come. We are meant to appreciate and understand our unity differently through what we do. And most importantly, as we receive these gifts, we consume them, the body and blood of Christ, the Son of God, that we might know that there is meant to be no distance between us and our Maker and the grace and the love God has for us. May we seek to share that grace and love with each other in spite of the distance we may find between us. Let us pray. In peace, dear God, I come to you through Jesus Christ, makes me new. And while I run or play or rest, be with those whom I love best. Guide me in your holy way as you walk with me each day. Amen. The hymn is numbered 708 in Voices United. 708, O Lord, what a morning.
Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words in my mouth and the meditations in all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Marcus Barth was the son of Karl Barth, the great Swiss theologian. Marcus Barth wrote these words, that faith is not a matter of belief. It lets you off the hook too easily. Faith is a matter of action, of being alive in the body of Christ and allowing Christ to be alive in your body and so change the world as God sees redemption in the world to unfold. And this morning in the Gospel, the, the apostles, you and I, have a request of the Lord. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our action. Increase our liveliness in the body of Christ. Not increase my faith, not increase your faith, not increase his faith, not increase her faith, not increase the faith of the minister, not increase the faith of the elders. The request is not to increase individual faith. The, fa the prayer is to increase collective faith. Lord, increase our faith. And this is always the prayer of the church. Lord, increase our faith. Bring us alive to be your living presence in this world. Bring us alive so that we enact your presence in the world. Bring us alive so that you can come to us to continue the work, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Often an individual's faith is quite small as small as a mustard seed. And we are often overwhelmed with the idea that we cannot do something. It's too much for us. It's an impossible dream. Why would you ask that of me? Or God is asking too much of us even. Because we think only of our faith, our individuality, our individual ability, and our individual resources. Throughout history, men and women, just like you and me, Men and women of faith have heard the Lord calling out to us to initiate change, to give birth to have a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the first earth have all passed away, especially after COVID. The world has changed. To give birth to a new concept of church. Why are we in silos? To give birth to a new vision of hope, especially to people who are imprisoned by the newer rivers of Babylon imprisoned in a land or a culture where the reign or the realm of God is a foreign concept, imprisoned in forms of captivity and prejudice that denies them the freedom to be whom God created them to be and who dreams them yet to be. But as Mark Twain once replied, the only people that like to be changed are babies. <laughs> Throughout history, men and women of faith have faced seemingly impossible tasks, mountainous barriers of injustice, wide oceans of economic, political, or social inertia, or a prejudicial environment that said, you were only the son of a fisherman, therefore you should be a fisherman. You were only the daughter of a scullery maid, therefore you should be a scullery maid. Or you were only the offspring of one of them, and can anything good come out of Nazareth? To change public opinion is a seemingly impossible task, especially when people are in positions of privilege and power, and when they ask, why should we change? We've always done it this way, and it's perfectly good. Throughout history, men and women of faith have asked the question, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How can we bring God's music from heaven to earth in face of what lies before us? How can we teach our children to sing the songs of Zion when they know nothing of Zion? In 1989, in Leipzig, in Dresden, in what was then East Germany, crowds of people came streaming out of their churches one night singing a common hymn Ein feste Berg ist unser Gott. A mighty fortress is our God. They came out singing that ancient Lutheran hymn with candles in their hands. They came out singing defiance of the forces of the world. They came out facing guns from the communist government. They came out facing what was evil and embodying evil. They came out singing in defiance of the government. An unlikely but profound change occurred because people had faith. Individually, not one of them could affect any change 
but collectively, they changed the entire landscape of Europe. The strength of any one of us might only be as big as a mustard seed, but when joined together with the strength of others, we can say to the mulberry tree, be rooted up and be cast into the ocean. Change occurs when individuals join together and become one body. As we come together on this Worldwide Communion Sunday, we are reminded that we join with men and women throughout the world, with whom together we can move mountains. We can say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted. Many of you will remember Martin Luther King Jr. He never thought that by himself he could change the entire social structure of the southern United States. But he was not alone. Individuals came together with him as one body and marched from the churches into the world. And mulberry trees that were once lynching trees were torn up and cast into the ocean of change. Some of you remember Tommy Douglas, a Baptist minister. He never thought that he alone could change the entire medical system of this country with the introduction of Medicare. But like-minded people joined with him, came along with him. And now we all take for granted that any one of us can go to the hospital. Any one of us can have an operation and not have to mortgage our houses to pay the medical bill. As individuals, we, Christians, have to be reminded that we do not exist alone. We exist in community, and we exist for community, and we exist as community. When we come together as the body of Christ, we can accomplish Christ's will. We can do anything. The powerful changes that can always be accomplished in our society when we join together are sometimes what Christ is calling us to do. The power of the world is to try to keep us isolated, to try to keep us in silos, to try to keep us concentrated on individualism, individual rights, and try to keep us out of communication, out of community with each other. Alone, we may not be able to do anything, or hardly anything, but together in Christ, all things are possible. And therefore our prayer is, Lord, increase our faith. And what is lacking in my faith, you might have in your faith. And what together is lacking in our faith, other people here will have. And together we will have sufficient to accomplish what Christ asks of us. Together we can support each other through the bad times, through the good times, through the times of darkness, with no electricity, to the times when we have an abundance of energy. <clears throat> Together we will sing the Lord's song in strange lands, in strange situations, and in strange circumstances. Yet greater than this, look around you at the people who are with you today. Not only those who are there with you in body, but think of the people who have come to join you from the kingdom of heaven. In that great company, there's someone exactly like you, Someone with the same inadequacies, someone with the same fears, someone with the same worries, someone in the same captivity, someone imprisoned behind the hard bars, not of steel, but of public opinion. They are here with you today. Our own statement of faith begins with the truth of which we need to be reminded. We are not alone. We, whoever we are, by saying we, Christ is joining you with someone else in this congregation, and you are becoming a part of we, and we are not alone. By saying we, we are proclaiming a truth that in the body of Christ, there is exactly somebody like you and me, somebody that is in the same situation as you and me, and we are not alone. And by saying we, Christ is trying to open our eyes to the fact that none of us are ever alone. We are always a part of a great communion of saints that thrives, that moves, that subtly moves into the world, into the body of Christ, both here locally and throughout the world. We are not alone. And here at communion, we are joined in the body of Christ with people who know us, people who understand us, people who comprehend us, 
people who have come to grant us the liberty of us knowing that we are not alone. No matter who we are, we are not alone. So we can say to the mulberry trees that are lynching us, we can say to the mountains that are opposing us, we can say to the forces of evil, be uprooted, for Christ is coming. We can say to the forces of oppression, be uprooted and planted in the sea. We can say to the wonders of fear in our world, be uprooted, your time is over. Be uprooted and planted in the sea. We can say to the deniers of truth, be uprooted and be planted in the sea. We can say here at communion, we are not alone. We are with Christ and we will overcome and we will change the world and God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So our prayer today is the opening lines of the gospel. Lord, increase our faith, our faith that you are with us, our faith that we are not alone, and our faith that the mulberry trees will be uprooted and cast into the seas. Beloved of God, do you know with whom you sit today? They are people who have changed the world. And now they're breathing their ideas into you. Oh Lord, what a morning. The stars begin to fall. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you that you have joined us with each other in this great communion of saints. We thank you for brothers and sisters, wherever they may be around this world, who are joining with us now. Oh Lord, Increase our faith. Amen. And I invite everyone to stand that we might say together the words of a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And please remain standing for our offertory prayer. Lord, help me discern my life, what is important and what is excess. You have given everything to me, gifts to have and hold, and gifts of family and treasured memories, and gifts of a family of faith and faithful friends. Help me to give from what you have given me, that others may benefit from your abundant gifts to me. In Jesus' name I pray. The hymn is published in the bulletin.
Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Please be seated. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for his continued life with you in glory, and for his being the host of this meal, which is us in the church. He has taken away the sins of the world and brought us into unity with you. Therefore, we join our voices with the angels and archangels and all the company of the redeemed to sing your praises. On the night of the Passover, our Lord set a table with his friends, as he sits at table with us now. He took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal was finished, Jesus raised his cup. Again he gave you thanks and praise. Then said to his disciples, Drink from this cup, all of you. This is the cup of covenant renewal that binds us together in one body with the blood of God flowing in us. Do this in remembrance of me. Loving God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon our offerings of bread and wine. Grant that they may be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Loving God, pour out your Spirit on all who share this feast, that we may be for the world the living presence of Christ, serving and reconciling all people to you. Remember your church scattered on the face of this earth. Gather her in unity and preserve her in truth. Remember our friends who have gone before us into the richness of your presence, especially Mary and Mary, Frank, Dean, Faye, and Marie, and Harley, and all those whom we mention in silence.
in communion with them and with all creation, we worship and glorify you always. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to pray in our own languages. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven the hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Don't give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses. Come as we go with those who are in us upon sins. And in the name of God, the temptation, may deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Good share in life. Amen. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ was just broken for you. Preserve you to life everlasting. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ's body is always broken for us. And be thankful. This cup is the blood of Christ poured out for you. May it keep you unto life eternal. Now we are one in Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we should ever bear from this place the mystery of your love emblazoned upon our hearts that our words, actions, and deeds, and all that we are should be a reflection of your presence in this world. Blessed we pray you, the congregations of Woodlawn and Port Wallace, and all those who seek to enact your kingdom in this world, for your glory, with all our brothers and sisters around the world. Amen. Let us listen now as the choir leads us in an effort.
we gather together, and as Adam goes very secretly off to the organ, <laughs> we'll join with the Welsh people as we sing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah, number 651, and I presume we're going to end it as we traditionally end it? We will. Surprise to you who are visiting with us today. <laughs> 651, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Jehovah. say together our parting prayer this morning. Bless to us, O God, this day, the doors we open, the thresholds we cross, and all the roads that lie before us. Go with us always as we go, and at the close of our day, welcome us home. We extinguish the candles to remind us that the light of Christ is not in candles. You are the light of the world. It is in you. Will you join me in the benediction? May the blessing of the Maker be yours. And serve in us, above us, and within us. May the blessing of the Son be yours. The wine and the water, the bread and the stories, to feed us and remind us. May the blessing of the Spirit be yours. The wind and the fire, the still the small voice of calm, to comfort us and to serve us. And may the blessings of God, three in one and one in three, be yours to stand every day. To protect us, defend us, encourage us, and strengthen us. And may we bless each other. A blessing rooted in our common pilgrimage, the blessing of a friend. I realize many people may be scared to shake hands with your neighbors, but please turn towards your neighbors and bow to them and say, Welcome, good morning, peace of Christ. Oh
We invite you to sit for a moment as we share the announcements for the community. For those of you who are at home, Kathy, who is working from home, will flash up the announcements for the community. Those of you who are here present will notice that there's an insert in your bulletin with the announcements. We're not going to read them all. For there, you can read them. Worldwide Communion, we thank Woodlawn for joining with us today and for being in our midst and how all God's people have gathered together. Thank you for that. Discussion group on Tuesday evening, Wednesday, the devotions for United Churches for Dartmouth, Thursday choir practice, next Sunday is Thanksgiving, pastoral care, you see that, you see the rest of the announcements there, the prayer circle for the congregation, e-news, offerings, food bank, the special this week is Giant Tiger, 10 pounds of potatoes at 244. If you can get that for the food bank, that'd be greatly appreciated. Paul will be here to pick it up in the Wednesday at noon. The book sale, you'll see there, Book sale Friday, October the 28th. You see the dates and the times. $5 a bag, I believe it is. The turkey supper you'll see there on Saturday, October the 5th. Two sittings or takeout. $25 a meal. Those are the announcements for Port Wallace. Oh, there's more announcements. I'm being... The turkey... Well, people can read. I made it through all the service without making a mistake. Ah! That's a relief. <laughs> this is, yes, at Port Wallace supplies the buns, butter, and biscuits for feeding others of Dartmouth downtown at Margaret's for Thanksgiving. So if anybody would like to bring buns, butter, or biscuits to Port Wallace Church next Saturday morning from 9 to 10, Lillian will be here to receive them. I thought I saw David come into the church late. Yes, David, would you like to add to that? A man of few words. <laughs> now for the announcements for Woodlawn Church. I was going to let Ivan make those too, but I think I, I can do that this morning. I have to read them off my phone, so bear with me. Uh, first of all, just, uh, you know, uh, Ralph Sounds and his chowder team have had a hard time this past week uh, trying to uh, figure out when power will be restored to the church, and we're not sure yet. Uh, but we are remain hopeful. We have uh, people on the job, and uh, we hope uh, to uh, have things reconnected soon. But in the meantime, uh, the Chowder and the Ellis Brothers concert that have been scheduled uh, remain to be uh, determined when that date will be. And also the funeral that was scheduled for Harley Eisner has been postponed, and that will take place on October the 14th. Uh, the UCW of Halifax will be having a rally at Woodlawn on Saturday, October the 15th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the Woodlawn Cemetery Annual General Meeting is scheduled for October the 18th at 7.30 p.m. And uh, all interested persons are invited to that meeting. And just a reminder that Margaret's House is in need of 24 ounce and 32 ounce uh, new takeout containers with lids, uh, and they're available from Costco if you are able to make a donation. Uh, just I want to extend a big thank you again to Port Wallace uh, for your hospitality this day. Uh, and it is truly, it's, it's not just a gift, it's uh, sharing worship together and being together is really what we're called to do. And so perhaps we're just living that out a little more this day. And a big thank you to so many who have worked so hard uh, during and following Hurricane Fiona. We had a couple of volunteers at the church uh, who were manning a generator, Donna and Martin Kramers, and they're here today. And they were keeping watch over that generator to keep the freezers going in the food bank uh, while everything was without power. So a big thank you to them. And again, thanks and God bless you all. We have one more announcement. Uh, yes, we are bringing back a junior choir, a youth choir, which will start in two weeks uh, right after the service. So I'll be sending something out, um, so keep a look on that, look for that, and um, we hope to do something for um, Remembrance Day and for around Christmas. Are there any other announcements from the community? Lyle.
the congregation is reminded that at 12 noon we have another funeral coming up for Mary McLeod. Beloved of God, these are announcements. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Kathy, is there any announcements on the web? Good morning, Ivan and everyone. Um, yes, we do have, I believe it's Paul that does have something to add here. So Paul, you can go ahead. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's been a while since I've brought you up to date on where we stand on our mission to provide 100,000 meals to the needy this year. We have 66,000 66, meals we've provided so far. We have 34,000 to go in the last three months of the year. Now, it would be great if somebody who lives in an apartment building would feel the spirit and contact the church and they'll put you in touch with me and they'll talk to management and we'll get some apartment food drives. We need at least two and then we'll hit our 100,000 meals for the year. So please get in touch with uh, Cheryl and make it happen. At 66,000, we need 34,000 more. God bless you all for caring. I love you all. Have a great week. Thank you, Paul. Those being the announcements for the community, let us go into the world to love and serve God. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>